Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. Whew, here we go. Um, this message is in regards to the hypocrisy, and as you've seen in the title, you probably have a pretty good idea what that hypocrisy is. It has to do with me as a Christian and me as an otaku, Japanophile, weeaboo, whatever you want to call it. It's in regards to my eroge. Now, I'm like, I guess I, I guess I'll just hop right into it. There's like so many thoughts buzzing around in my head, and uh, hit over 30 subscribers. That's awesome. Going to be doing um, a little thank you video on that soon. Finally trimmed off the beard. So glad that that's gone. I'm just not a beard kind of guy. I looked like Mark Senpai, and that was awesome. But I just, I'm not a beard kind of person. Probably need a little shave up here too. I may or may not do that soon. We'll, we'll see. Um, not committing to that at all, and. Glad to be home from camp. It's nice to be home from camp, but because I'm a homebody and I love the internet, and as I mentioned in a few of the videos, the internet there sucked, but man, some really, really good stuff happened there. One of those things being a conviction on my life about the Eroge that I have read, slash watched, slash played. Um, for those who are not in the know, an Eroge is a visual novel. Now that, um, eroge is E-R-O-G-E again, you'll see it in the title, it's pronounced eroge, and it means erotic game. Essentially what those end up being, it's a type of visual novel, well, a lot of visual novels are erogays. From what I've personally seen, I don't have like a ton of experience. I've um, been playing them for a few years, um, not like a really, really long time, but I guess just because I'm an otaku, it kind of when I did experience them, I was just like, wow, this is really cool. I really, really like this. So I played um, just you know, tons of different games out there. Uh, Clannad I like and Clannad I will keep as I will... Reasons I will get into shortly. But it's a, it's a game where like essentially you, it's a, you have your background like, yeah, like that where the camera goes totally out of focus. <laughs> But you have your background, a background picture, and then you'll have whatever character you're talking to, they're usually right there on the screen with you. Um, a lot of them are voice acted, they have music soundtracks, there are sound effects. A lot of the stories are really, really good, but they have sexual content in them, pornographic content in them. And for a really long time, I was just like, well, whatever. And, you know, I love the stories, they're a lot of fun. Quite frankly, I like the. I like my animated boobies as well. Those are also quite good. Um, and as I mentioned in one or two other videos, I don't think it was a ton, but yeah, porn's a problem. Has been for me for a very, 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 very long time. And as most of you guys know, Christians shouldn't be looking at porn. Now, a lot of people are going to say, you're a dude. And by the way, I am a single guy on top of that, so I'm not mentally cheating on anyone. So, a lot of people would be like, well, even if you're married, you know, variety, spice it up, get a little something different, you know, wet your whistle, um, and plenty of other much more horrible sayings. Um, I've probably said much worse on some of my video game videos. I won't go into all of that here. Because <clears throat> on preaching videos, I have a commitment to not use any profanity because I want Christians and non-Christians alike to enjoy these videos, whereas the video game videos... I'm just kind of like, eh, if you're watching most video gamers on YouTube, you probably won't mind if I cuss a little bit there. But some people may not prefer that, especially some Christians out there. If you want to listen to a message, you don't want any profanity interlaced. So on behalf of those Christians, I don't use that profanity in these messages. So I could use several other analogies there. I simply won't. I'm going to cut it off there. Also, I'm not going to mention any, like any games whatsoever. I played a lot. Let's just leave it at that. I played a lot of them. And yes, sometimes um, lustful thoughts would be involved there. Um, most guys don't watch porn for the great acting. <laughs> and it was something I did for a while, and that kind of goes into the hypocrisy that I was talking about. And um, one of the last messages that I preached, very recent from here, just want to have a pure heart. And that is, uh, it's a song I heard in a church a long time ago, and I was like, you know, that's just that's a good tagline for what's been going on. Most guys would think, you know, hey, you're a Christian, yeah, um, so that's probably a bad thing. And some of you may be like, yeah, I forgot to set my alarm again. I'm sorry. I never remember to set my freaking timer. <laughs> um, 
you know, you're a guy and you're a single guy. You're not even committed. Even if you are committed, who cares? It's porn. You like to masturbate. You like you like boobs. You like you like um, genitalia. Who cares? What's the big deal? As a Christian, it actually does matter. Most Christians watching this will be like, yeah, that's bad, that's sinful, you should stop that. In fact, if you're addicted, why are you even trying to do a preaching channel on YouTube? I'll get to that in a minute. To address the people who are like, who cares? It's not important. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, I would say as a Christian, my fellow Christians are right. It does matter because my God... Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not commit adultery. Now, by the way, adultery is actually in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And that is, of course, you know, you're married and you have sex with someone other than your spouse. And that was, that's in the Ten Commandments. So that's like one of the big no-nos. And by the way, yes, it was punishable by death. In the Old Testament, it was a very big deal. Um, and just as an, a total aside, this is probably worth a sermon at some point in, in the future. Like I say about many other things, I'll get to it at some point in the future. I would argue adultery is actually worse than homosexuality. Homosexuality is a sin, as I've said in a few previous videos. And I will say that unashamedly. I'll completely own up to that. As a Christian, it's my duty to tell the truth in that matter. But I would personally add, if adultery is in the Ten Commandments... There's probably, if there's any kind of ranking system, if you're in the Ten Commandments, that's pretty high priority. Like, if you want to say something, and I personally do believe that some sins are worse than others, that's another good sermon for another time. I do believe, based on some verses that I've read in the Bible, whereas all sin is bad and all, and all people are sinners, some sins are worse than others. And I do believe that adultery is the worst sexual sin. Not only because it's in the Ten Commandments, but also because it is the breach of a covenant, the marriage covenant, which is a very, 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 very important covenant. So you should not commit adultery. That's bad. Um, it's, not, it's not acceptable. And in my personal opinion, the worst sexual sin that could be committed. Ugh. Ugh, it's just that I, per I also personally really despise the thought of adultery and that level of betrayal, betraying that level of intimacy. But Jesus didn't stop there. He continued in verse 28, But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And some of you guys um, have heard, some of you guys that are not Christians have heard, hey, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't lust after women, and you're like, a, it's, it's who I am. It's in my nature. I want to have sex. Who cares? Who cares if I actually do it, much less if I think about it? As a Christian, I do care. Because the Bible says, essentially, yeah, adultery is bad, but if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Another quick aside, I don't believe that lust in the heart equals actually acting out on it. Actually, lusting after a girl in my mind does not equal having sex with her. The two are very different things. And my, the, the simplest argument there would be look at the consequences. The consequences are radically different there than if I sit in my room and masturbate to some chick or actually go out and have sex with her. There's a big difference in consequences there. And I don't think anyone, religious or not, Christian or not, would argue that. And if you believe that the sins are, if you believe that it is the same, you're welcome to your opinion. I don't agree with that. Not just based on the consequences, but also, again, I believe some sins are worse than others. And acting on a sinful impulse is much, is much worse than considering it. Considering it is still bad. It's not good. It's still sinful. But it is not the same thing, and it is not as bad as actually doing it. Sins of the heart do not equal sins of action. But it's still a sin. And then he goes on to say in verse 29, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. 
the eye and the hand in reference to sexual sin. Um, masturbation. Well, I will, I'm not going to use any profanity in these messages, but I will be bluntly honest. In my opinion, Jesus really just spelled that out. You look at a girl and you masturbate, your eye and your hand. I could be wrong. Maybe that's not the reference. That's what I see. When you lust after as men, well, and there's women too out there for the female audiences. It's not like you girls don't have any sexual desires. Um, you see someone of the opposite sex that you're attracted to, and if you allow lust into your heart, generally you will masturbate over that person at some point. That's simply the truth of the matter. And porn pornography is a great encourager of lust. Um, I won't get into the whole objectification of women and all those other things. Jesus said it's wrong. That's good enough for me. Quick addendum, don't pluck out your eye, don't cut off your hand. Doing those things will not give you access to heaven. Only accepting Jesus Christ will give you access to heaven. Accepting his forgiveness, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, only that will get you into heaven. If plucking out my eye would get me into heaven, yes, I would do it. As insane as that sounds, if that would grant me eternal life with God, after this life, I would do it. If cutting off my hand, or both hands, if plucking out my eyes and cutting off both hands, and both feet, if, if somehow physical dismemberment, or physical self-torture, or cutting, or suicide, or any of those things got me into heaven, I would be willing to do them. Eternal life, as opposed to some suffering in this life, and that's pretty much what Jesus was saying there. Whatever it takes to get to heaven, whatever it takes to avoid going to hell and going to heaven, do that. Do whatever it takes to go to heaven. Make sure that you lay hold of eternal life. But, I'm like, yeah, there's really not a nice way to say it. Even if I chop my balls off and chop my penis off, there's no, that, that alone would not cure lust. And yes, that's, this is an incredibly blunt sermon. Um, there will be more like it, too. I won't use profanity, but I won't hesitate to say what I believe to be the truth. I won't hesitate to say just outright, here it is. Here's what I believe. Here's what I think you need. Here's what I think is good and important and relevant. So, yeah. If And several Christians in the past, if you look it up historically, some of them read the verse and castrated themselves. And as in regards to lust, specifically, and I believe more specifically masturbation. But chopping off my, cutting out my eyes is going to make me, I won't be able to see any more women. It won't get the things that I've already seen out of my head. Chopping off my hands, it's a hindrance to masturbation. Um, it wouldn't stop me from having actual sex if I still have my penis. And even if I plucked out both my eyes, cut off both of my hands, Chopped off my penis and my balls. Maybe if you, I cut off my balls, it would stop the testosterone so there wouldn't be any more sexual desire. I hear that's not the case. I don't plan on experimenting to find out. But yeah, chopping off all of those body parts, all, both my eyes, both my hands, my balls and my penis, that wouldn't cure the heart problem of lust. It wouldn't help me. It wouldn't do the trick. Cutting off my various body parts or self-mutilation will not get me into heaven, and it won't free my heart from sin either. It won't get rid of lust. That's not the cure. If it was the cure, I'd do it. If that would get me into heaven, I would do it even faster. But that's not the cure. That doesn't help. That doesn't do the trick. Only... A deep devotion to Jesus and carrying your cross daily and accepting the cross in your heart. Dying to yourself. That's the cure. And no, I'm not, I'm far from perfect at it. But because of uh because of this camp and just the preaching that I heard there and the spirit that was there, God really He got on me about the eroge. And he was like, son. You know that's not acceptable. You know that's not okay. You know it's sinful. And all these years, despite, and I knew it was wrong. So all those messages 
about, you know, stop your sin or God will judge you. Stop your sin or you're headed for destruction. Stop your sin that, that you know, it, it makes God angry. It brings bad things your way. God will judge you for it. God's looking at you while you do it. All the things that I said in those previous messages, so many of those things applied to me. And I just kept lusting away anyway. And I kept playing those games anyway because I, I liked them and they were fun. And honestly, some of the stories were really, really darn good. In all honesty, some of the stories um, are just absolutely magnificent. Um, incredibly well written, beautiful music, and really well drawn women. And I can't justify that lust any longer. I couldn't justify it to begin with, not biblically. I don't even know what was going through my mind. I think what was going through my mind was I know it's wrong and I don't care. I know God will judge me at some point, but I don't care. I'll probably give it up one day because God's going to keep on reminding me, and he reminded me very, very often, this is a sin, this is a sin, this is a sin, this is a sin. I'm just like, I don't care, I don't care, go away. No, 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 my way, my way, my way, not you, not you, not you. I'll, I'm obeying you with like 80% of my life. Let me just keep this 20% of eroge on the side and enjoy that, and let me have my fun. And that is so incredibly wrong. I didn't look up this verse. And, I mean, that, that was the main verse for this message, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna quote another message that's in there. Uh, Google is your friend. But there is a story, a parable that Jesus told where a master of a household went off and he told the servants, look after my household, look after my affairs. I'm gonna be gone for a long time. One day I'll be back and one day I'll settle all my affairs. Look after my house in the meantime. And the master went on a long journey. And some of the servants said, the master's away. Let's go and play. And so they started beating on the other servants, started using the master's assets, using his house for whatever they want, started doing, you know, not only beating other servants, but also just, you know, doing whatever the heck they wanted in the house. And it continued thus for a very long time. And eventually the master of that house did come back like he said he would and at that time the servants the servants who obeyed him were rewarded the servants who disobeyed him were cast out into the outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth um, and they were beaten severely and there were other servants who they knew what was right and they knew what was wrong, and they didn't necessarily, they were halfway, they were somewhere in the middle. And yes, I know I didn't quote this story exactly right. Google is your friend, and, I, but I, and unfortunately I don't know that which gospel it is off the top of my head. I know it's one of Jesus' parables. Google is your friend, look this up behind me. Um, and I, I'm telling the story in a paraphrase, so I know that doesn't help, and I apologize for that. But I feel like it's, it's important for me to bring it up at this point, what I do remember. The servants that were in the middle, the servants that didn't really rebuke the bad guys, and they might have done a, a few bad things themselves. Again, I forget exactly how it went. And I should have, I, it's like, I wish I'd prepared for this in advance. It would have been so much better to actually read this story. But those servants that were in the middle, they were beaten, but with fewer stripes. And they also weren't cast out of the house. And for the longest time, I've been one of those servants in the middle. Doing mostly good, doing some bad, not really paying too much attention. And I knew the beatings were coming, and I knew when I stood before the Lord on Judgment Day, I'd have to re reckon and account for all of it. But the stories were so darn good, and the masturbation feels so darn good that I just didn't care. Ah, oh, this is an open and honest message, isn't it? And that's what I want to be with you guys open and honest and because I was doing something that wasn't biblical well it's like I guess if I if someone had confronted me with it I'd been like yeah I should stop doing that probably won't I would have been honest in person but it's not like I'm gonna broadcast this to everyone and say yeah by the way I'm doing this I didn't lie to you guys but at the same time 
I wasn't living for the Lord. All those messages really applied to me. I wasn't listening to myself, and that's hypocrisy. And that's one of the things that most of you guys are really disgusted about in the churches. The hypocrisy that's there. And I was one of those people. Even if it's only on a smaller scale, I was one of those people. That's disingenuous. And even if it's not a direct lie, it's the hypocrisy doesn't equal lying, but it's, it's so darn close. And hypocrisy is more disgusting than lying, in my opinion, because uh, instead of just lying to someone and be like, yeah, 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 I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do this, and you, and you just blatantly don't do it. You like you're doing your very it, with hypocrisy. You're saying you know do this, do this, do this, and then you're actively going against what you're saying, or you're doing it in secret and not telling anyone. And that's so much worse than a blatant lie. Um, and from what I've read in the Bible, I think Jesus agrees with me uh, when he talked to the Pharisees. Again, this is in Matthew, was it chapter 23, chapter 24? I'm going to bother to look that up. But the Pharisees, he, he raged against them because of their hypocrisy. Matthew 23, he raged against them because of their hypocrisy. That was the main reason he didn't like the religious leaders of Israel, the Pharisees, because of the sheer level of hypocrisy that they were doing. They were like, serve God, serve God, obey the law. And then they themselves in so many ways twisted the word of God and their laws contradicted the law of God, or subverted the law of God in some way. And it was those subtle things, it was this preaching of righteousness, but inwardly not having it for themselves, Jesus was outraged by that. And I think hypocrisy is far worse than normal lying, and here I am, a friggin' hypocrite. So I'm sorry to all of you for that. I was wrong. I sinned. I came clean to the Lord, but it isn't enough that I just go to the Lord and admit this. I should go to the people that watch me, look at me, and be accountable to you guys as well. It's, yes, my sin is forgiven when I ask the Lord to forgive me, but as someone in a position where people are watching me, people are listening to me, maybe not very many now, but even if it's only 30, you guys are so important and I love each and every one of you and God loves you even more. And here I am being a hypocrite. That's so bad. That's so wrong. I sinned. And I'm sorry. And some of you guys may have watched through this whole thing and you're still thinking, dude, who cares? Thank you for watching this far, even though you disagree with me. If you're, if you're still watching this far and you disagree with me, thank you so much for hanging it with, with me to the end. But I really do believe it's a sin because I believe in the Word of God. I'm hitting my Bible right now. That's what I'm touching. I believe the Word of God is true. I believe Matthew is an accurate account, one of four of the words that Jesus said. And I believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh and he knew what he was talking about. As a creator of the whole universe, he would. And so I'm in the wrong and I'm sorry. And the camp that I went to really helped to clear my perspective on these games. I've deleted them all, thrown them all away. I've apologized to the Lord, now I've apologized to you. And now I can honestly say, 100% to my current knowledge, I'm serving the Lord with everything I have. No more mixing. No more a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. And I'll just take a few of the beans because I'm enjoying my bad. No more of that. I'm going to serve the master all the way. I'm going to be a good servant from this point on. I will stumble and fall. And when I do, please call me on it if it's here publicly on YouTube. And all my friends who are watching this who know me in real life, please call me in person in real life uh, when you see me doing wrong and me airing. Please call me out on it because I want to be the best I can for Jesus. And here we are near the end of the message. Um, if these words reached you, I'm very, very happy. And for those of you who want to know Jesus for yourself, for those of you uh, still willing to listen to me after confessing that wrong, I want to let you know 
that Jesus is ready to forgive your hypocrisy too. Um, for those of you who aren't even Christians, He's ready to forgive you of this sin. If, some of you are still thinking, I this is kind of ridiculous. Who cares? I'll have actual sex if I want to with as many people as I want to, as long as I'm not cheating on someone. Who cares? Some of you may think, yeah, I'm cheating on someone, but it's not hurting my children. It's not hurting my wife. It's just a little fun on the side. And to all of those of you who think that, obviously I can't control you. I can't make you do what God wants you to do, and God's not going to force you either. I would incur, I will tell you that you're wrong. I'll tell you that you're in sin. And I'll tell you you need to repent. It's bad. It's not healthy. It will hurt you. Especially when you stand before the, um, Jesus on Judgment Day. It's going to hurt bad. Some of you are listening and thinking, man, I'm in the same boat. If those of you, for those of you who are Christians, just repent now. Um, it took a summer camp and some really, some really awesome people, uh, one in particular, um, to really uh, get my attention and convict me of this sin and to show me I'm wrong. Um, I would like to be that one person for some of you guys. I really would like to be. I'm hoping that despite my hypocrisy and despite my not living for the Lord all the way, now that I am, I'm hoping this message will reach some of you guys and bring some of you to repentance. And for those of you who are like, well, I don't know about Jesus, but what you've said really touches my heart, and I, you know, I feel like I have done wrong. I feel like these things are wrong, and I want to make these things right. I want to be right with God. There's good news. You can. You can become a Christian. You can accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Join the crowd and just don't be a hypocrite like I was being. Serve God 100% from the beginning. Give up lust. Give up porn. Give up extramarital relationships. Give up fornication or sex outside of marriage. Give up those things. Give your life to Christ. It really is better in the long run. If you're willing to believe in Jesus and willing to believe the Word of God that I just said, that's awesome. Tell Jesus that you're sorry for your sins, that you believe He died on the cross for you, and that He rose again. And if you want a, like a model prayer to follow, pray this with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I've stumbled and I've fallen. I've done bad things. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross, shedding your blood to forgive me of my sins. And I believe that you rose again three days later. Please come into my heart. Please be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of the sins I've committed, including the sexual ones. I repent. I turn away from those things. And I purpose in my heart to not do that anymore. I'm going to live for you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you. Amen. And for those of you who prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. Congratulations. I'm so glad you're a Christian along with me now. I'm so glad you're a part of the family of God. F please get a Bible, read it every day, and learn, and learn how God thinks and how God feels about pretty much everything. The Bible's pretty inclusive. It covers a lot of ground. Learn to hear His voice through His Word. Find other believers, other Christians who believe the same thing as you, that Jesus Christ is God. He died on the cross, can't, rose again. The Bible is the word of God. Find other believers who believe the same thing to encourage yourselves amongst each other. And make sure to pray to him every day. A simple, God, how are you? Or, Jesus, I need help. Or, you know, God, I'm feeling kind of crummy. Or, God, this person needs help. Something that simple, that's a prayer. Or even the, God, how are you today? You know, thanks for being my Lord and one more day and for loving me. Those are prayers. Those are awesome. God loves that. Shoot up a few prayers every single day and commit to these things. Make it, make it a life goal. Make this a life commitment. And all I can say is it, it's, He has changed my life. Christianity has changed my life. He will change your life as well as you come to Him. Thank you guys very much for forgiving me. And for those of you who've watched all this and you're not convinced of anything I've said, I understand. 
and that's okay. And if some of you feel inclined to unsubscribe from me from all of this, I would ask you, please forgive me because but the same Jesus who talked about lust also talked about unforgiveness. And that's also pretty bad to the point where in the Lord's Prayer, he says, forgive us as we forgive those who've sinned against us. So if you, if you uh, aren't willing to forgive me, you're in some pretty bad sin yourself. You're in pretty bad shape yourself. So while I get it, it's bad, it's sinful, and it's wrong. And that needs to stop. But if you want to unsubscribe from me because of this, I certainly won't hold it against you. I do get it. Um, and perhaps you're willing to forgive me, but you want to distance yourself from me. Now that I really do understand. I really do get it. Um, I, my hope is that this will encourage and inspire others, especially my fellow otaku who are struggling with the same thing as me. Um, Jesus is worth it, guys. He's Lord. And any sacrifice we need to make to serve him is worth it. Any. All right? So thank you guys very much for also watching this video. I love you, and God bless.